Family Clinic, healing families, restoring marriages. Welcome to my channel. This is Prophetess Dr. Justina. I welcome you to this family clinic. If you have not followed me on this YouTube, please go and subscribe. Hit the notification button so that you will get every notification when we upload our new videos. And if you have not liked, like, share. Make sure you are inviting someone. It's an exclusive program that is designed to heal family and restore marriage. Be an evangelist of this family clinic. Shalom. Catch our family clinic every Tuesday, 8 p.m. East African time on this channel. Family clinic. Healing families, restoring marriages. Family clinic, healing families, restoring marriage. Praise Jesus. You are welcome to this wonderful episode of uh, Family Clinic. And I know God is going to do something amazing in our lives. Let's pray that God, in His infinite mercy, we heal family and restore families. Whatever the enemy is throwing at families, whatever the enemy is throwing at our homes, may the Lord come through and give us total victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, today I pray that anyone that is tuning in, that they will have divine understanding. They will be able to understand and practice that which you are going to help me to reach out to them by your glory. So I know if you have not shared, quickly begin to share it. If you have not let someone to know that we are live, do it right now, share on your platform. Let someone know that we are live. Let someone know that the family clinic is on. And for those who are already tuning in, may God bless you. I want you to subscribe, like this video, so that it can be recommended for more viewers. Please understand that your comment is a key. I want you to comment, ask questions, let those things that you want to understand. Please ask questions. It is always good for us to have an interactive section so that by the time I finish my teaching, I can deal with those questions and we will gain more understanding. Don't forget, it is in the interest of God that you have knowledge. And knowledge is power that gives us victory to overcome every situation of life. My prayer for us all is that God will give us grace and show us mercy that will enable us to walk in his light and in his glory. So today I'm going to continue. We talked about last week how to deal with conflict. Today we are going to be talking about things you should not do, things, action you should not take when you are in conflict. You see, when couples or people in relationship, you have an issue, there are things you are not expected to do. Those things you are not expected to do, if you start doing them, it means you don't want the success of your relationship. Remember last week we talked about the things you have to do to make that conflict to be resolved. Now this we are talking about things you shouldn't do at all. When you do them, you damage the relationship. You hinder the progress in the relationship. Or better still, you make the relationship to be a relationship with a strong mark of hatred, bitterness and anger. And that's not what we want for ourselves. We want a peaceful home. We want a peaceful relationship. We want to see one another happy with each other. Remember the scripture says, live happily with all men. And also the scripture says that a woman with wisdom builds her home. So I believe that we are going to work together as one another to build our homes to build our family so that God will be glorified. I know many Christian family is going through this situation. Sometimes there is conflict, 
you don't know who to talk to because you don't want to be mocked, you don't want to be labeled. Sometimes you might even decide to take decisions based on your understanding and without you knowing that those decisions you are taking can actually crumble or destroy completely whatever that is left in that relationship. I pray that by the help of God, this revelation we are going to receive today will help you and I to know action we shouldn't take when we are into or going through conflicts. Number one thing you must not do when you have an issue with your spouse, your fiancé, is don't involve third party. Don't involve third party first. Deal with it. Don't involve first party first. Don't go and start looking for third party to bring in when you and your spouse has not dealt with the issue. If there is an issue of consign, sit down the both of you, bring your view, I get my view, we look at it in our own understanding. It is when you both cannot agree to what you have done, either wrongly or angrily, that's when you say, okay, if you feel you are right, if I feel I'm right, and we are not ready to understand one another, that's when you can involve uh, maybe your pastor, if your pastor has an understanding about your marriage and if your spouse are conducive or comfortable to that, don't just bring in third party in your issues. Third party can become a third part. It will tear you people apart because sometimes when people don't know the value of where both of you are coming from, they are going to judge according to the event. If I don't know the history of your relationship, I don't know where you are coming from, I don't know what two of you have been through, I don't know how you have got to where you are, I will judge according to what I have at my disposal. And at the end, I am not going to judge right, I'm only going to judge based on the incident. And probably, maybe the problem is an accumulation of past incidents. You see? I will not understand it. That's why you need to sit down. Don't avoid yourself. Don't run away from one another. Sit down, deal with it first. When you can't deal with it, that is when third party comes in. It's not that anytime your husband has an issue with you, you pick up your phone, you start calling your mother, you start calling your sister, you start calling your auntie, you start calling your relatives, you start asking your brothers to come and beat up your husband, or you go tell your, your sisters to come and beat up your wife. Those things doesn't make sense. You are not enemy and you are not in a tug relationship. You are in a relationship with mutual understanding. If you feel there is something that is not going on the right way, deal with it. Deal with it in a mature way. If it overwhelms you or both of you, then you seek for your pastor. If you are Christians, if you are not Christian and then you have a role model, somebody you are walking alongside saying, I feel like these people, they have what I need to build my marriage. You can talk to them. Those who were there present during your marital vows or during your commitment to one another, you can reach out to those ones you feel they have the matured heart and they are able to help you. But the best thing to do is to avoid third party because third parties comes with emotion. It is very difficult to see a third party who will stand out and speak truth, tells you this is it. I know you are my daughter, I know you are my son, but this area you did wrong. That area he did right. It is very difficult to get people with such courage to say it. That's why it is good. First fight it within yourselves. First try to resolve it. When it's overwhelm you, you now look for third party. Another thing that you have to, you must not do to your partner when you have conflict don't use sex against one another don't use sex against one another don't say because he has offended me because he has made me feel somehow i will no longer have sex with him 
and he's married to you already and you know that sex is one of the mutual rights that both of you owes one another so when he refuses to to have sex with you or you you refuse to have sex with him automatically you are not solving problem you are piling problem because according to the man if you are not having it with me definitely you are having it with someone else according to the woman if you are not having it with me definitely you are having it with someone else how do you explain it that the issue of yesterday is the reason why you have stayed one month two months three months no sex it doesn't make sense those are for children i don't even think animals behave like that i am not sure of that so you have to understand that your, your your sexual right is not a weapon of warfare your sexual right is not a weapon of warfare it is tormenting when you allow your sexual life to become a resisting force that you want to use to attack one another it is not right it is your right for you to to share remember what the bible say give benevolently give benevolently show that benevolent kindness to one another don't deny yourselves your right two of you have that mutual right to seek sexual appeal or sexual need for one another don't allow conflict to destroy your sexual relationship one thing about sexual relationship it bounds and it brings freshness in your relationship when there is no freshness automatically whatever that cannot be refreshed will begin to stink whatever that cannot be refreshed we have some offensive order when it has those order what does it cause it drives people apart so you cannot allow your decision to drive the both of you apart in a wrong way don't use sex as a weapon be mindful of this give in to one another men who denies their wife sexual appeal or sexual need you are doing something very wrong to your wife you are killing her emotionally you are killing her mentally you are making her to feel unwanted and rejected and sometimes you can also make her feel as if she is guilty of something whereby you know it is just you and your personality that is bringing such kind of issue into the family neither is it good for the woman to deny the man his own sexual right you are for one the bible say two of you came together and you became one flesh can you take a cane and flog your own self can you take something and kill your own self it is always difficult when it comes to personally you cannot do something bad to yourself just the way you wouldn't want to be bad to yourself that's the way you ought to extend your kindness your love and your care for your partner so that two of you will have good relationship that will, will last for long another thing you should not do when you have conflict with your spouse don't involve your kids don't involve your children in an issue that has to do with the both of you if two of you are having your own issues don't involve your kids some men are very good in telling the children you know your mama don't like me your mama wants this your mama wants that you know creating an impression before the child that the mother is wicked bad evil you make that child to be confused and that child will no longer be able to know where to place their allegiance or their loyalty or maybe mothers will begin to feed their children with her bitterness towards the husband you don't need to make your children feel so bad because you already know what is going on in the life of your husband and you begin to share it with children who are still yet not understanding what you are telling them one of the things it will destroy is their educational strength when you tell children adult matters it makes them to begin to backslid educationally they will not know they will not even know how to share with you they will feel so deeply hurt they will feel so confused they will feel so derailed they will feel so 
affected that before you know it educationally they will begin to go down educationally because they are no longer thinking of their future they are no longer motivated of their education they are now feeling insecure they are feeling what of if we are not around and daddy comes and beat up mommy what of if we are not around daddy does this to mommy they start fighting fear they start fighting uncertainty, they start feeling rejected and abandoned, they lose hope and the joy that they ought to have as children. You ought not to, both parents, you ought not to get your children involved in your mess. Deal with your mess and get the children out of your circle. This has brought a lot of bitterness in the life of so many kids that it has shaped their way of life. Some women don't like men because what they saw their mother go through or what their mother told them they went through from the hands of their father some men don't want to have a woman who wants to control them because their father has made them believe their mother is controlling if we continue setting this pace we are going to destroy our homes we are going to destroy our family i have met a guy who thought beating a lady is what makes you a strong man he said my daddy beat my mom and say when you beat her she shuts up and you will be on top that's an impression this child grew with and thought it is needed in his own marriage he practiced it until god privileged me to have an encounter with him you must not let your children be involved. Take your children out of the equation. Just like they were not there when the marriage started, they ought not to be there when you are having issues in your marriage. Protect their mindset. Protect their ability to go to school and be useful to themselves in their future. Another thing you should not do when you have conflict with one another is don't refuse food don't refuse food some men are good at this when they have issues with their wife because the women are the cook they will refuse to eat when you deny to eat the food you already introduce tension in your own home no one wants to live in a tense place no one wants to live in a place whereby the, the negative energy there is on a higher level no one really, really, truly wants to be in such environment. When you refuse food, you create an impression that the matter is still on. You can still talk about your issue without denying the food or refusing or rejecting the food. Maybe your children already knows that your, your food is on the dining. And when they keep saying that you are not eating, they have a question mark. They will go ask their mom, why is daddy not eating? And they will start feeling, is there something wrong with the food mommy has cooked? You have created an, an, a, a, a situation. Don't refuse food. Food is not your enemy. The cooker is not your enemy because in the end, you live in the same house with that person. Learn not to refuse food because when you start refusing food, you kill something inside. You bring something, you bring a concept of distrust. You start making your wife or the partner to feel like you have something different in your mind. You have ulterior motive or you have a higher evil intention you are planning. Sometimes when we eat together and share meals, it shows love and kindness within ourselves. So don't refuse food because you feel you are having issue with your spouse. You stop eating at home, you start buying food or you come with your own food or you cook separately what they cook. Please, let our home not to become a war zone. Let us make our home a peaceful place. Let us make our place a home, a, a place of inhabitation that our life will be sweet within one another in Jesus' name. Don't beat your spouse. When you are going through conflict, don't allow yourself to be moved to the point where you will start spanking one another. Don't fight. It is wrong to beat up your wife. It is wrong to beat up your husband to create an impression or to correct an error. It is wrong. Don't beat up one another. Fighting is terrible. I had witnessed a case where in my country, a young couple, 
very handsome and very beautiful woman. They had a blessed marriage, very Christian-like family. Unfortunately, the wife was pregnant and somehow she got she put to birth. Two weeks later, the man wanted something and the woman could not help. And the man got angry and said, why are you so lazy? In the midst of this so lazy issue, and the woman is saying, I'm going through pain, you don't understand. For sure, the young man does not understand. You have given birth. Why are you going through pain? Give me what I want. They started fighting. The man wanted to take a pillow to strike on the wife. Unfortunately, he picked the child and hit on the, child, on the wife. And the child stretched and died. That was an incident that could be avoided. That was an incident that they could have avoided and saved the life of that child. I tell you the truth, the marriage broke. The family of the girl could not take such animalistic husband. They took their daughter, left the body of the baby for the man to go eat up with his family, and they walked out on him. If they could have avoided that, it could have not happened. Let me tell you, children of God, Fighting is very bad. I don't know how somebody you share so much with can suddenly lift up their hands to beat you up. Me, my mind cannot, I can't imagine it. I feel like it is the worst thing that couples can do to one another. Fighting and beating up one another. Some men beat their wife naked. They beat their wife naked on the street. My goodness, this is terrible. Are you an animal or a beast? What do you call yourself? If you continue in that act, you will end up creating a bad impression. People on your street, even you yourself, you can never feel comfortable and happy if you are a man bitter or a woman bitter. You must avoid it. Fighting is not godly. If you want to fight, go and fight demons. If you want to fight, go and fight ancestral powers. If you want to fight, go and fight territorial forces. Go and fight the invisible battles that have already set against you. You don't need to fight your couple. You don't need to fight yourselves. It is a terrible thing to correct your husband or to correct your wife by beating them up. Some men even go to the extent of getting a cane and flogging their wife. My goodness. Kwani, you are a teacher. You don't do that. You two have equal right, not against one another, but for one another to have a perfect home. Don't beat up your spouse. It is not good. And some of you, you do it while you have children, and your children watch you do such kind of animalistic character to one another. May God help us in Jesus' name. Another thing you must avoid not to do when you have conflict, don't curse your spouse. Don't lay a curse on your spouse. When you have an issue with your spouse, don't lay a curse on them. Don't say, because of this thing you have done, may you die. Because of this thing you have done, may you lose your job. Because of this thing you have done, may you not end well. Because of this thing you have, don't lay courses. Because why lay courses? You guys are going through something. And whatever you are going through, it's just a matter of time. You will resolve it when you have heaped up so many courses. In the end of it all, what next when you settle? Satan already have the course you have already given to that man, to that woman. He has written it down, waiting to afflict the two of you. You cannot allow yourself to be living a life of laying curses upon one another. You are laying curses and you have children together. You are laying curses and you live in one home. You are laying curses, you are going back to bed again together. It is very unfair for you and your spouse to use anger to lay curses on yourself. Patient and slow to speak in the place of conflict is actually a sign of maturity and divine wisdom. Don't fight one another by laying curse on each other. Please, I want to make sure you are, you are commenting. I'm about rounding up. 
so that I can go to the comment section and answer those questions. Another thing you must not do when you are having conflict is don't stop your financial responsibility to your family. Don't stop your financial responsibility. If you are the breadwinner of the home as a wife, please don't stop. If you are a breadwinner as a, in the home as a husband, please don't stop. Don't say, because we are having issue, I'm going to punish them. You know your wife is jobless and she has nowhere to get money. And you are the source of fund in the family. You deny them access to that fund because you know you are having dispute. It is not good. Or because you know your husband has no job and you are the breadwinner of the family. You decide to use your wealth to stand against him and refuse to support it is not good. We should not be wicked to one another. Don't stop your financial responsibility for the sake of proving a point of superiority. It doesn't make sense. You can push your wife to go and sell herself for money because she feels she cannot condescend. Or Satan can use it against your children. Your grown-up children can go out there and find themselves some men or find a way of getting money for themselves. You will introduce things that are not fair in the life of your family and in your children. So please avoid refusing to take care of your responsibility as a man of the family because of issues that concerns you and your wife. Please deal with issues with wisdom and understanding when you have an issue things you shouldn't do don't stay too long before settling your issues when you have issue with your spouse don't stay too long don't allow yourself to stay one year two months one week ah yeah what's happening you have refused to settle within one another don't do that don't stay too long before settling your conflict. When you stay too long to settle, you need certain consultation before two of you can decide to make up. It doesn't make sense. It is the two of you. You are in one bed, one is facing east, um, one is facing north, the other one is on the south. For what purposes? Don't torment yourself for so long. It is heartbreaking to torment yourself for so long. Don't do that. Allow yourself to be together. Don't stay too long before settling yourself. My prayer is that this revelation and information God is allowing me to share with you, you will use it to your advantage. You will use it to correct the errors in your marriages. You will use it to correct the errors in your families. You will use it to even advise others. That's why I say share, like it, and subscribe on the channel so that you will become an evangelist yourself. Many people are going through so much. Carelessness in marriage or carelessness in our, our lives has cost us so many things. We can avoid it starting now. I pray for you that anyone who has been going through any kind of conflict, may God help you in Jesus' name. I want to believe you are still sharing and inviting your friends. Right now, I want to go through the comments. Oh, Father, we thank you for today. Thank you because I know you are a God that does what no man can do. Please drop your comments, drop your questions, and God will bless you. I want to start with the first question here. Mama, is the wedding best couple a good choice for third party consultation? Not really, because sometimes uh, your best couples might, might, might be your choice because of financial involvement. Some people choose best couples because of financial involvement. But if there are people who you have known for a long time and they have been part of you, then it can be advisable. But don't allow yourself to get to a point where you will need third party to settle your differences. Because third party, you don't know. Satan can use them because they are not in your shoes. You are the both people wearing the shoes. You only need someone with divine wisdom. You have seen me in a case in the church, prophetically. Somebody is saying, I need my wife back. And I'm saying, no, the bitterness in you is too much. It is not about this woman coming back. 
deal with yourself handle your own self so that you can heal and when this woman comes in you will be sure of success in the marriage so always understand that anyone you involve in your marriage you really don't know what they can offer to you because they don't wear the shoe but i want to let you know it is always very good to have a heart of forgiveness and understanding to one another it will ease you from disaster because you can be surprised you don't know the heart of men even god who created men says that the heart of man is desperately wicked who can know it may god help us in jesus name mama is it okay to hold on says if there is concern or fear of sexual tra and transmitted diseases today we have mechanism to check those things if you feel your man is doing something that you are not clear or you feel your woman is doing something you are not clear we have ways of doing it it's just that most women are coward in nature some men also they don't have the courage to say i want us to do a test telling me i want you to do a test should not arouse any offense if i feel like you are doing something i'm not comfortable with and i have evidence of what you are doing and i demand to check a sexual transmitted disease which we now have kits there are kits that you can use to test any of the infections of consign that is transmittable to you. You do the test. If this person finds it difficult, then you resort to condom. You, you go use condom as an alternative. Denying sex because of fear is not completely the best. There are ways to detect. Detect your issues and make it regular if this person has proven to be unworthy so that you will be free or better still you use a protection to protect yourself against issues that might hurt you in the future that's a very sensitive question and it's very good my mother used to tell us that all men are monkeys is it true parents can affect the future of their children yes if all men are monkey and your father is not a monkey, what is he still doing with the monkey-related father? You see, you can, it can also make you to look at men and you will be wondering, when will I see the monkey side of a man? We are actually damaging the, in, the mindset. Let me tell you, children who are from home where their father and their mother have a lot of baggages and issues, most of those children academically cannot perform because they are traumatized of the events and the issues that always comes up in their family. But may God help us in Jesus' name. May God help us in Jesus' name. Oh my goodness, that's, that's, that's crazy. It's, it's, a, it's a very good question. All men are monkey and they live with the monkey. Wow. Mama, is it okay to take a break from the relationship after misunderstanding and then come back together when both of you are fresh. Take a break from marriage or take a break from what kind of relationship. If you keep running away from your conflict, then there is an issue. You don't take a break. The Bible says, let your anger not go to the next day. It, the God advises us to deal with our issues right there. He said, at least the devil will tempt you. That time you are taking a break, you don't know the woman that come and break him down. There is no place for break. You only have to learn how to manage your anger. You need to learn how to manage your reactions and actions. You need to understand that any time you give the devil in your relationship, in your marriage, he can plant a big seed. He can sow a seed that you will not be able to approve at the end of your life. So there is nothing like break. Please, misunderstanding in marriage is not always caused by satanic powers. Most of the misunderstanding we have is because we are stubborn-headed or we don't want to admit our fault or we don't put others in our shoe. That's selfishness and greediness. But the best value you must have for one another is create a forgiving heart that you will not be piling up offense but you will be able to sit down, talk about it, and let it go. 
life goes on. There is no man without an issue. There is no woman without an issue. There was a situation where toothpaste, the way a woman pressed toothpaste, has made her husband to say, no, me, I don't want this woman. She's too careless. Why does she press toothpaste everywhere? Imagine, toothpaste, that toothpaste will finish after three months. No matter how you press it, it will last forever. But action and reaction made them have a big issue on toothpaste. They could have decided, my dear, have your toothpaste. I have my toothpaste so that I can press my own from the head to the tail. You press your own from the tail to the head. But they didn't think about that. Why? Anger, greediness, selfishness has made them to be blindfolded. There is no room for gap. Any gap can be filled by stranger. Somebody says, oh my goodness, that question, you guys, I, I, I thank God for you guys. May God bless you. Mama, is it okay to walk out of an abusive marriage? Yes, abusive marriage is not a good one, especially physical abuse, where you fight and fight and fight. You need to know what is making this man to fight because some men might react because of the way you speak to them. Some women, our mouth is worse than satanic mouth. You tell a man, look at you. I regret the day I marry you. You are nobody. In fact, if I look at you, you are like a, a, a chicken. After telling a man he's like a chicken and he wants to prove to you there is no chicken in him, that is not abuse. That is proving to you he's not a chicken. Use of language can bring abuse. If you are sure that it is not use of language and this person is not under influence, then you can be very mindful because if you are not careful, you can also lose your life if you don't take a step to protect yourself. Oh, my shantarabarabos. Rekolebo zente ribaraba zanta yabaragadose. Riba zubra de le kasunta yaba. Mashanda rabuz. Rekobo zu kaiba zante riba zagada. Mashanda labu zege dege dege de. Rika raba. Rabu zaga rabu zege de ba zibra dagada zele bazuza ze. Marika leba zonte riba zibra diados. Rebo zega iba zante leba zibra de. Oh, Shantaya Baraba. Mama, is it okay for a man to buy everything in the house, including grocery, and not give the woman money at hand? Well, uh, it is not good. It is good if you want to become the, 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 the house girl by buying everything you want to buy, maybe because your wife has no bargaining power, it is okay. But there is what we call miscellaneous expenses that the man ought to give to the wife. Maybe like some amount of money depending on the number of the family, but it is not good to deny her cash if you know she has no job. Because her relative might call her for money, her relative might have an issue or program and she wants to contribute, she might need pad and she wants to buy and she doesn't have the courage of asking you always about it. There are many reasons why you should let a woman to have some money with her. She might have a daughter who is already of age and she starts seeing her monthly cycle. What do you want her to do? She might want to keep it secret or hold it for the time being for the girl to pick up. She doesn't need to come and say, give me money, I want to help my daughter. Sometimes when you give them money, they feel they own something. So it helps to boost their mind in the partnership of marriage. It is not good to completely strip your wife naked of all cash, knowing that he does, she doesn't have any other source of money. It is not wise. Actually, it shows it maturity. Mom, if you have an ag argument and you need time, should you notify your spouse or is it okay to just go blank and come back later? Bible said, the word of God said, before the end of the day, put yourself together. God knows humans. He created us. He knows that if we give them time for so long, they might engage in something 
that is not going to be good. Let me tell you, I always say this, nobody is a superman. Nobody is a superwoman. Understand that you don't have what it takes to fight the devil you don't see. So don't assume letting your husband be. He can click on click YouTube right now and see something. These days, women are selling everything online. He can see something they are selling and get addicted to it. By the time you are coming back from being blank, he himself, he is already black out. You will not fit in anywhere anymore. We should just learn to have a forgiving heart. As Christian, God said, don't allow your anger to go down without settling with your spouse. Understand that two of you are from different backgrounds, from different families. You were not brought up in the same way. So there is no way you shouldn't expect you should, he will offend you. There is no way you shouldn't expect that he will not understand you. If you get overwhelmed, get to the shower, bathe, have a good bath, bathe with hot water, or go and walk around, do some good exercise, or cook a good meal, eat something sweet that will bring you back to good energy but going and going blank where you are going if those people have gone somewhere where will you see to go if you want to go to your mother's place and your mother has been quarreling with your father and he has not gone anywhere where will you go if your mother has gone somewhere else we cannot leave our homes because of issues that we can choose it is a choice to forgive. It is a choice to let go. It is a choice to maintain happiness. It is a choice. You can't sleep with a broken heart day and night, day and night in days. You will die. Your blood pressure will be drained. Your energy level will be consumed. You don't need it. It is very bad. Spiritually, it is bad. Physically, it is bad. Sometimes if you are angry, you see yourself dreaming weird dreams. Demons are looking for you because your anger is attracting them. How long will you keep them? You need to be spiritually light. And the Bible says when you are angry, there is no progress in the family. Do you want to live in poverty? No. Your children are at stake. Even you, you need good life. So there is no place for excuse. May God help us in Jesus' name. When you confront him about what it does, that change how do you address it when you confront him about it he does that and change how do you address it that question i'm not getting it well i am not getting it well you decide to take a break when you come back you find there is no space for sure that's a good point these days men are in a hurry they are not having they don't have shock of zava Women also, we don't have shock observer. We are in the age of speed. So don't think that you are too important or relevant. You might be surprised when they shock you with different kind of uh, limousines in women. May God help us in Jesus' name. How much should a couple handle conflict when the conflict arises because of a child? How should a couple handle conflict? When your children are the reason for your issue, first, don't let that child know two of you are having issue. If the child has done something and the father is angry, stand with the father before the child to say, Baba, listen to what daddy is telling you and take correction. When the child finds out that you are supporting the father, the child will find, start thinking, Kumbe, I have done something wrong. You see the one speaking Swahili? should be clapping for me you see that when you say that they will be wondering maybe mama has supported daddy because i was wrong then when you go inside with your spouse tell your spouse you are too hard on these children you don't use hardness to take care of a child you must learn to show them love as you correct them when you finish with your spouse go back to the your son or your daughter and tell them daddy loves you we are just trying to help you build your future. That's what women do. We are mediator between our children, between our husband, between our community, and even between every other thing. We are the mediator. Continue being that mediator and you will be surprised how God will bless you for sure. Mama, is it okay for a man to ask the wife to quit her job and become a housewife? 
If you ask me personal opinion, no. The first housewife we saw in the scripture was Eve. Eve was a housewife and uh, Adam was the one tendering. Before Adam came back, Eve had eaten the apple. Half housewife and gossiping is very close. When she becomes housewife, she can become destructive. It is better you create a small business, something that might not take her full time. But asking a woman with brain, a woman who is energetic, you see, if you give her so much time, she will get into your nerves. She needs to do one or two things. Being a housewife is sometimes men does that out of jealousy and inability to manage that jealousy. Please, women, support your men. If you don't support your men, they will get old on time. When they get old on time, they will not be able to help you. Old age is you need them. Support them. Don't say that it's a man word. No. If God has given you wisdom and blessed you, support them. Cheer up one another. If you are the one, let me tell you, there is something God showed me. Time pass. Maybe I should just share it. God told me that in families, sometimes he can choose to make the woman the breadwinner. Why? Because there are some women that God has opened their financial flow. Through them, God has trust them more than their husband. Financial responsibility. So because of that, he will make the man not to have personal wealth. Every success of the man will come in his obedience and alliance with the husband, uh, with the wife. So if you as a wife is ignorant of this reality, you will think you are prospering better than your husband. You don't know that God has been the one who appointed you to take care of the financial leadership of the family because he trusts you. He knows that your husband might be overwhelmed or the foundational powers from where you are married to will not allow that man to have the kind of money God has destined for you people. If you understand this truth, we will not feel bad when we are the breadwinner as a woman or the man is the breadwinner. What are we even winning in the bread? We are not winning anything in the bread. We are winning ourselves. We are winning our joy. We are winning for our children. We are winning for our future. So we should be happy for each other. Whosoever God choose to become the pioneer of finance in the family, we should be happy with one another. My prayer is that God will help us to have clear understanding. But telling your wife to stop, especially the educated ones, is not a proper decision. You don't know what tomorrow can bring. Tomorrow can bring disaster. And that job of your wife can be the sustaining job you need to become bounce back as a man. May God help us in Jesus' name. If your husband asks you to stop working in a good job, and stay home close to the kids is that fair is unfair you can if the job is taking your time and making your children to suffer you can get a better plan on how to take care of your children let me tell you the children also needs us so you must put them in priority but losing the job especially when the job is not demanding doesn't make sense because finance will not understand when it is needed to pay bills. If a man marries a bad woman, how can he help himself out? If you marry a bad woman, first you have to bear the overload. Why were you in a hurry to marry? Or maybe mistakenly the woman lure you into marriage. You must bear the consequences first and cry for mercy. Either for God to change the heart of this woman or to give her a, a soft heart instead of a hardened heart. But I don't know what people call good woman and bad woman. It is all about character and character, character issues. If you don't know how to do something, you can do it in a wrong way. So when someone has a bad character and you are married to her and you want to help her, you can help her realize their conduct. Some people who has bad character actually does not know because they felt that is the convenient thing they think they should do. You see, in this part of the world, people give me things with left hand. And I will wonder, how can people be giving you things with left hand? 
and they do it as if it's innocently. You tell somebody to pray for someone, he's lifting up his left hand to pray in partition. Or give me food, you are giving me with left hand. Give me water, you are giving me with left hand. Why are we doing it here? It is so common here. People even eat with their left hand or enjoy using their left hand. Why are they doing it? Ignorant. I asked someone, why did the Bible say, and Jesus ascended to the throne of his father and sat on the right hand of the father? Why do they need to specify the right hand? They should have said hand. After all, the right is no longer than the left. Neither is the left longer than the right. But because there is a significance of what the right hand represents, that is why the Bible made it very obvious to be notable that there is power in the right hand. And now when you have a woman like that and you are from a different part of the world and she gives you things with the left hand, not knowingly, what do you do? You can say she has a bad character, but in the end, information has disappointed her. So bad women, you need to understand what you mean by bad. But if you have anyone, the first punishment is that you have to go through her madness understand how to avoid it, then you plan how to brush her to become a better version of herself. Don't always run away from people because of what they are. That is why we must learn how to impart on people. Patient is a virtue for impartation. May God help us in Jesus' name. How do you handle a spouse who does not appreciate anything you do? How you do it can be a problem. If you do it and make it obvious that you need an appreciation, you already make that person feel inferior. Don't look for an appreciation. Create an avenue for it. Don't do something and make someone feel like, look at you, you just sit down here looking at me like an idiot Why I'm the one taking care of the home. You see, when you do that, you make that person, you have already taken your thanks. Why give you again? Allow people to have the ability to show their gratitude. Also, there are some people who does not know how to come out openly to say thank you. But you see them doing other things to prove that they were grateful. So read in between the line. Are they showing in any other way that they are grateful, maybe cleaning the house, maybe going to buy something for you, maybe giving you attention? Just try to know. But if you have one who does not show appreciation at all, then you have to devise a means to compel him to recognize when something is done in a right way. Maybe you have to allow something to go wrong so that when he needs help, he can now request. And you tell him, why, why do you need this help? If you do this, then you teach how to say, I am sorry or thank you for what you have done. Mama, if your spouse is always mean to you in private, but an angel to your family, you talk to him, but he does not change, how do you handle that? If your spouse is always mean when you are together, that's a, that's a very big issue. It might be that that person does not like you somehow, and he was forced into having a relationship with you. So what you do, Create an avenue to understand why he is behaving like that. Is it because there is something he doesn't like? Or is he seeing you as a trophy wife which was put on him and he was not ready? When you get the interpretation of that action, that will help us to solve the problem. Because if it is that, it means you have to start building on your capacity to influence him. You see, you can teach someone how to love, but for you to teach someone how to love, you have to know their struggle when they are not able to love. Another one says, if a woman has a better job and high paid and richer than the husband, how to help this? It is understanding. That's why I said you must let, you see, when a woman is the one on top of the finance, now that woman has to learn submissiveness in a higher level. You have to learn to be more submissive, 
you have to learn to be more tolerant you have to learn to be more patient because those are the things that the man can be using to accuse you you think i because you have money you know they will be throwing words so if you are more tolerant if you are more patient and you already know that having more money it gives you an authority don't enforce that authority again because you already have it by the cash you have to now apply wisdom be libra allow that man to be relevant in a certain area that makes you weak so that he will feel like there is a balance between the two of you mama how does a couple handle conflict due to different spiritual belief this one i advise before marriage i'm about to round up this one i advise before marriage don't go into a relationship with someone who does not believe in what you believe the bible says, can two work together except they be an agreement when there is no agreement you can't work together so if you have already find yourself in a certain relationship before you find a belief what you do allow time to help you convince and the Holy Spirit to convince that person to understand your own spiritual belief. Don't be in a hurry. Patience solves a lot of problems in the life of the children of God. Another question. Someone said, Mama, how can you tell or talk with your spouse about intimacy without sounding rude or disrespectful? There are many languages. If he's denying you, sir, start buying a good nightwear. If he's denying you, sir, start buying, you know, those G-strings. Buy them and wear it for him. You might not be comfortable to wear it outside. Wear it and sample it just with you there. Get a good perfume. Spray it that the perfume will be calling him to come and perceive you. There are many ways to, 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 to attract your man to you. There are many ways. Make the room look roomy and loving. Also, if he feels he feel he's rejecting you outrightly, you can communicate with him by letting him know that you love him and you miss him. Don't go quarreling. I love you. I miss you. And anytime I'm not able to come close to you, I really feel like I am missing someone very important. You see, you can only conquer hatred by love not by competition or complaint. Let resound back the love you have for this person. That place whereby you people started from, take it back to there. And that can spike him out and he will come for you. But the best thing, other things you must do, spice yourself. So most, we women, we are too, some of us are too rigid. You are wearing three clothes to sleep. You are saying it is cold. There are many sweet, warm things you can use. Stop being too rigid with yourselves and with your, with your bedroom. It is your private bedroom. Utilize it to your advantage. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mama, why is it that when a woman cheats, it is considered a sin, but for a man, it is considered a mistake? That's a conception. It is because, one, women, we are very dangerous. If we are giving authority to sin on sexual relationship, or we are giving opportunity that when you cheat, it is not an offense in the society. Women will not cheat. They will marry 50 men in one day. See, women are very powerful personality. Check in the scripture, which woman did God fight with? Even the women who did wrong, God did not fight with them. All. Sarah did wrong, God did not fight with him. Richard lied, God did not fight with him. God don't fight with women because he knows them. He created them. They are strong personality. If you give them, he said, don't undermine the woman. If you give women approval to do things the way they should do it, <laughs> Did you see Bible say, woman, submit? For you to say submit, it, it means that a woman does not have what it takes to submit. That's why the Bible says, love your wife, because women submit to men when they see that they are being loved by that man. When a woman is not seeing that you love them, hey, they will come with power and thunder. 
Have you not seen the same woman who loves a man and realize that the man he loved does not love her? She can cut off the man's head and put it in, in her purse and go home without minding anything. She will even cook without nobody we know. Many men have died in the hands of men because of love issues. So understand that women are power beings. That's why God does not have issues with them. He doesn't quarrel. In fact, God practically avoids women. Read your scripture very well. He practically avoids them. He gives men instruction. He spoke to them, but he avoids women. And anytime a woman wants to raise an issue, he struck that woman. Did you see what he did to, to, to uh, Marian? He knew that if he does not come to Marian and give her such sanction, Marian is capable of destroying the church of Moses in less than two days. So he has to do that to frighten Marian and any other person who would want to rise up in like minds. So be very, very known that women are power beings. They cannot be given. Look at, check anytime you see a female arm robber in the midst of men robbing. Do you see the way they spray bullets? They have no conscience. They will kill and they will feel comfortable. Women are very active in nature. That's why they are the incubator of God. Their energy level is in another level. Don't play with them. So I am not against men who says women should not cheat. If there is any way they can control us not to do that, because if we start, it is not as easy as it is to stop a woman on a on rampage revenge. That's my opinion. You might not be comfortable with it, but because I know, I have seen that the women, we are so energetic in so many things. That's why you need to be wise. Men, may God help us in Jesus' name. I pray that God will help us. I don't know if there is any question I'm leaving, but I know that God loves you. And uh, thank you for your participation. It has been a good ride with you. And uh, I thank God that this information we are sharing will help you to go to your next phase of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Next week, I will be talking about how single mothers can overcome their challenges as single mothers. How single mothers can overcome their challenges as single mothers. I have taken statistics. We have a lot of single mothers who are stranded. They really want to serve God. They really want to understand what am I supposed to be doing if there is no Mubaba? What am I supposed to be doing to take care of myself and my children? How do I need to be updated? And many are worried of their future. And God has privileged me to understand some certain things we can share with one another that will help you as a woman or as a man to be able to stay happily even as a single mother. And the God will bless you, give you the grace that you deserve for his glory to be seen. Don't forget to like this video. Like it before you exit. God bless you. Shalom. Be blessed and see you on Sunday. It's going to be powerful. Tomorrow is rescue service. If you want to be rescued, come because the ball is already rolling. God bless you. Shalom. Just Welcome to my channel. This is Prophetess Dr. Justina. I welcome you to this family clinic. If you have not followed me on this YouTube, please go and subscribe. Hit the notification button so that you will get every notification when we upload our new videos. And if you have not liked, like, share. Make sure you are inviting someone. It's an exclusive program that is designed to heal family and restore marriage. Be an evangelist of this family clinic. Shalom. Catch our family clinic every Tuesday, 8 p.m. East African time on this channel. Family Clinic. Healing families. Restoring marriages.
for any questions on this topic, write to us on the comment section.